who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed, this is verse 9, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worships the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Is that a stern warning? Do you think that's something that we should take seriously? Let me ask you a question. As Adventists, was Christ wanting to come in our past? Did Christ set the stage for everything that needed to happen to happen? Did Christ start to pour out the beginning of the latter rain at some certain time in our history? Why are we still here? I'm hoping some of you know why. Because, because if you do not know your past, what does it say after that? You'll be doomed to repeat it. Right? Is it important to know the past history of this church? How God has worked in this church. Is it also important to know the past history of the church? Do you understand why we're still called Protestants? Because most people don't, they don't, they don't have a clue. Okay? Do we still protest anything? Now, listen. The Protestant Reformation was a God-inspired time in history where God stepped in and started to bring back His truths that were contained in His Word. Now, did it all happen at one time? Did it all happen with one person? Did it happen over years and decades and centuries? Okay, so you have this Protestant Reformation that had a beginning that took place over centuries where truths that were lost sight of were brought back to God's people, that the Word of God was brought back to the forefront, and that the Bible was given to the people in their own common language. Now, where does that Reformation find its final fulfillment for the church of Laodicea? That last day, last church. Where does it find its fulfillment at? Anybody? Why are you in this church today? Why did God raise up this movement? <coughs> are we not supposed to give the Elijah message? Are we not supposed to prepare people for the coming of the Lord? Did not God not just give us great leaders, but did He not also give us inspired testimony? Yes. Did He not give us a special gift? Do we believe in that gift? Yes. Do we still use that gift today? Yes. So listen, I bring all this to you to let you understand. Martin Luther did a certain thing and he brought back certain truths. Is that right? But did he, did he bring back all the truths? John Calvin, did he bring back truths? Oh, did he bring back headaches to go along with those truths? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that man's caused me a lot of headaches. Okay, now, but did he bring back truths? Yes. List the reformers, Huss, Jerome, Zwingli, and keep going on and keep going on. Did they bring back truths that were lost sight of? Can you say that you're a Lutheran? 
Yes, of course you can, because you believe in righteousness by faith. Can you say you're a Baptist? Yes. yes, you can. Why? Because you've got a pool bag there that says you don't sprinkle or dust, but you immerse. Is that right? Yes. Can you say you're you're a Methodist? Yes. Most of our most of our uh, leaders came from the Methodist Church. Okay. Listen. The Adventist Church was raised to complete what the Protestant Reformation began. Do you believe that? Are you familiar enough with the history of the churches and the church to know why I'm able to make that statement? I can say that to you with a clean conscience and know that is the truth because you can't come to any other conclusion if you look at history and you look at the church and you read the Word of God. Did God raise up a people to prepare uh, the earth for Christ's coming? Yes. Did He prepare a people to give a last day message? To proclaim the everlasting gospel. To warn the people that Babylon has fallen, has fallen, come out of her, my people. And then to warn them, don't accept the mark of the beast. Because if you do, your name's not going to be in the book of life. And that the place will be poured out upon you. So listen. When does the mark of the beast come? Has it happened in the past? No. Well, if you were a preterist, you may think something different. <coughs> If you're a futurist, you're going to say, yeah, that's in the future. But we believe that it's also in the future. Has it come yet? No. Could, it have, could it have come in our past? Yes. 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 Was God ready to come back at a certain time in our history? Yes. And the answer, unequivocally, is yes. God started to pour out His Holy Spirit, the latter rain, so that the loud cry could be given. And it was rejected. And it was rejected by the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. So here we are today in 2016. And God has brought us right back to the promised land. To the very gates of it. And he asks us again, are you ready to go in? Do you have the faith of Jesus that will allow you to step out of this world and come into His world. Do you believe that Jesus is able to do what He has promised that He would do two millennia ago? Amen. Are you wanting to be that generation? Do you want to see Christ come back? Are you willing to allow God to put the faith of Jesus in your heart? Because you have faith in Jesus. That's up to you, brothers and sisters. And that's a choice only you can make. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 318.